there's a lot more to the TCAM than we see. But looking at the speaker, one of the things you notice first is the base system. It consists of two cups in hardwood. It's very beautiful, but also inside it contains a lot of parts that are essential to the sound. The principle itself is called a folded dipole. So that means the sound that comes out of the system is only from the front to back. So the two bass drivers are opposing and they're working against each other. So when one diaphragm goes forward, the other one does as well. So that is decreasing the internal volume in the front chamber. And at the same time, of course, it's increasing the air volume in the rear chambers and vice versa, depending on what direction the diaphragm is moving. That causes high velocity air pressure coming out of the ports. We actually call it an air velocity transducer. And that is important in things like hearing the attack of a piano key and a lot of chaotic sounds that comes out in that instance of the attack. A sphere is a physical shape that has no weakest point and no strongest point. We want to avoid vibrations of anything to do with the bass system. Any vibration that comes will add to the sound something that is not in the signal that we're sending to the loudspeaker. Inside the loudspeaker shell is something we call cement-based syntactic foam. That material has a property where it has a very high loss, actually minus 80 decibels at 370 hertz. So essentially, if we play some really deep bass, even down to a 16 hertz double stop organ pipe, that is a lot of energy for a bass system to produce. But if you go up and put your hands on that bass system, you feel no vibration at all. So there is no sound generated from any enclosure, no matter how loud we play and how deep bass we play. There is no coloration of the sound. So not only are the speakers box-free, they're also baffle-free, which is very important to us when we get to mid-range. If you have a baffle, you have an edge, and that is bigger than a quarter wavelength of the sound, which happens fairly quickly. If you look at 20 kilohertz, you have 1.7 centimeters, so the range is quite dramatic. So that means physically, we've got to make sure that we have no diffraction. That requires the mid-range to be quite small. So the shape it has has two reasons. Avoid diffraction and also make sure that the dispersion pattern is of a certain nature is about 180 degrees. So there's very little sound in the back and most of it is happening at the front. And most instruments, when we look at those, we will see that dispersion pattern mainly is at the front out to about 180 degrees. It seems to reason that a loudspeaker should do the same. Inside the tapered tube is insulation. At the bottom of the tube, quite hard pressed together, in the middle of the tube a little bit lighter, and then uh, the rest of it is just loose inside. All that is to stop the back wave from the diaphragm to come back reflected from the tube in much less amplitude so that we reduce distortion. The high frequency unit is similar in shape, again to achieve the same dispersion pattern. It is very slender, because now we're up in the higher frequencies, the wavelength is shorter, and we still want to avoid diffraction. The two units are then very close to each other because they, of course, need to integrate as if they were one point source. And then we avoid another phenomenon that's called loping, which are basically a lot of little patterns that would cancel out because of phase differences between the tweeter and the mid-range. That we avoid by a very steep slope crossover so the speaker is active, so at the bottom of the speaker we have a plinth or a bass, and that is containing all the electronics of the speakers. So we have three separate amplifiers, each for each of the three speaker systems that we have. It's a three-way system. The DSP is inside that plinth. It is used for the active DSP crossover. It also contains the input ports, and all the active pieces are in there. Now that's very important to us because we also guarantee and strive for 
completely time coherent behavior. That is one of the things that we can only achieve with an active system. So the TCAM is based in science and passion for music, designed with sound in mind and from the basis of science, but ended up for those reasons as a sculpture.